So what is a functional group? A functional group is a group of atoms that influence the behavior of a hydrocarbon. So that, remember, we're in the boring world of hydrocarbons, hydrogen and carbon. And when I use the term boring, I just mean that we've, we've kind of done every type of hydrocarbon you can possibly imagine. But here's the thing, there is an entire realm out there beyond hydrocarbons in organic chemistry of other atoms. I mean, some compounds have oxygens in them or nitrogens or have, you know, a certain array of different specific groups. And so we call those specific groups functional groups. And yes, they change the chemistry of the molecule dramatically. Okay, so there are seven of them. Yes, you're going to have to memorize them, and you're going to have to be able to identify them. The first of which sounds like a very common one, alcohol. All right, what is an alcohol? An alcohol is an OH group, okay, that is added to a hydrocarbon. That does not mean that hydroxide, OH minus, is an alcohol. It is not. But we're talking about bonding an OH to a hydrocarbon. The way you can identify an alcohol is that all of their names end in all. So what are our examples? All right, we're going to talk about ethanol first, and then we'll also do propanol. So put these both down, propanol and ethanol. So just from that, how many carbons do you think these things have? Ethanol, you probably guessed it. Ethanol has two carbons. So we have CH2. OH. All right, so that is ethanol. It looks exactly like ethane, but we dropped an H and we added an OH. So what can you think about propanol then? What do you think propanol looks like? You probably guessed it looks just like propane, but again, you add an OH. Okay? Now, if I wanted to draw this as, you know, like a line structure or something, I could do that too. So what does ethanol look like? Well, it would look like like that. So this is a carbon, that's a carbon, and then that little tag OH, that is our OH group being attached to it. So for propanol, it would look something like this. Again, one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, that last little line is just attached to an OH. Carboxylic acids. All right, now carboxylic acids are first of all really, really cool. But carboxylic acids are represented as this. All right, now you might think, what the heck? Yeah, it's a double-bonded oxygen and then an OH group. Now here's the thing that people get confused about. They're like, wait a second, OH, that's alcohol. This entire group is called a carboxylic acid. Uh, so this technically is not an alcohol on its own, and as we'll find out in a little bit, this technically is not a ketone on its own. They're acting together as one group, okay? So uh, don't get those kind of confused. Just because you see an OH doesn't necessarily mean it's an alcohol unless it's not attached to anything else. If it's attached to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen, then that means it's a carboxylic acid. Sometimes it's abbreviated as COOH because that's what it would look like if you were actually writing out the chemical formula or something like that, COOH. They all end in oic acid. So anytime you see a carboxylic acid, it ends in oic acid. Now let's draw a couple of carboxylic acids as our examples. So we're gonna draw ethanoic acid Okay, and again, just think through what you might think this would look like. And then we're going to draw propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. Now, what does ethanoic acid look like? You probably guessed. It looks something like this. So two carbons again, but now look what we have. We have our carboxylic acid group added to the end. What about propanoic acid? What would propanoic acid look like? Okay, well again, you probably already know this, but let's draw it out anyway. Propanoic acid looks like this. And uh, actually, you know what? Let me fix. <laughs> Let me fix my weird double bond at the top because it's going to kind of bother me. There we go. Uh, that's propanoic acid. So again, notice right here, I have my carboxylic acid group. What if I wanted to draw the uh, line structures for these? All right. That would be ethanoic acid. So look, I have one, two carbons. On my second carbon, I have a double bond and I have an OH. 
for um, propanoic acid, it really doesn't matter which direction I guess I draw this, but I'll draw it like this. That would be propanoic acid. Again, I have one, two, three carbons. On the third carbon, I have a double bonded oxygen and an OH. So again, just because you see an OH doesn't necessarily mean it's an alcohol unless, you know, it's kind of by itself. If it's attached to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen, that's a carboxylic acid. Those are two different groups. One of the easiest ones to identify, ethers. So an ether is just an oxygen between two different carbons. Okay, and that's just a solo oxygen, not a double bonded oxygen or anything. That's just a solo oxygen. Their names all end in ether, so it makes it kind of nice. So an example, because again, think about it, ether. In order to have an ether, you have to have something on either side of your oxygen. So I'm going to draw dimethyl ether as my example. So dimethyl ether, and my favorite one, methyl ethyl ether. I love the names of ethers. Some of them can be kind of funny. So dimethyl ether, what does that look like? I have methyl on one side. I have methyl on the other side. Makes sense. What about methyl ethyl ether? Well, you, again, you can probably guess what that would look like. I would have methyl on one side. It doesn't matter which side. And I would have an ethyl group on the opposite side. So just infer what would propyl ethyl ether look like or something like that? You can kind of understand the idea behind how naming ethers works, even if you don't know the naming rules for them. Ketones. All right, now a ketone, very particular thing. Uh, it is a carbon with a double bonded oxygen, but that's it. So remember, in a carboxylic acid, we had something that looked like this. This guy right here is not a ketone because by simply putting, you know, this next to a alcohol group, an OH group, that makes this a whole different functional group altogether. This is a carboxylic acid. This is an alcohol, all right, because there's no double bonded oxygen. And so this guy right up here is a ketone. Again, they're very different things. They have a different set of properties and everything. So please make sure that you don't sort of, you know, mix it around or anything. All right, so what do we need to know about ketones? They all end in own, all right? And so we're only going to draw one example of a ketone, and it's probably the one that if you were to, you know, actually see it, you'd be like, oh, okay, I know exactly what this is. It's called propanone, okay? And it's commonly known as acetone, okay? So acetone is, you know, nail polish remover, and so it looks like this. CH3, carbon with a double bond, double bonded oxygen, sorry, and then another CH3. That is propanone. If we were drawing the line structure for it, it looks like this. It looks like a person with no arms, all right? And that is, again, that's a series of ketones then. Next up, another important group, aldehydes, you know, the preservatives that were around in the 60s and 70s. So aldehyde looks like this. Again, notice you got a double bonded oxygen, but you have a hydrogen at the end. Okay, so not the same thing as a carboxylic acid, not the same thing as a ketone. All right, they are very different things. They all end in al at the end. So we're going to look at two examples here, ethanol and propanol. Now, how am I going to do that? Okay, so I've got ethanol. How many carbons do you think that has? You probably guessed it. It's got two. And then I've got propanol. So all I've got to do is just add on my last bit here like this. Now I can draw the uh, I can draw the line structures for these two. I'll do those in blue. This is an example of what a line structure would look like for ethanol, and then for propanol, I'm going to draw it like this. That's what propanol would look like. Again, count your carbons: one, two carbons; one, two, three carbons. That's the way that would work. All right, our next group: esters. Esters are cool. They have great sense to them. 
And by sense, I don't mean like common sense. I mean they literally smell. They are fragrant, and they actually smell normally pretty good. There's some bad ones, you know, bad smelling esters, but they're pretty good. So this looks like our ester group, okay? So it's C double bond O, and then another O. We sometimes abbreviate that as just COO. The same way that with carboxylic acids, sometimes we abbreviate COOH. Esters are similar. Uh, but again, they're very different, so make sure that you know the difference between the, uh, these different groups, not them. Uh, all right, so what do the names end in? They end in O8, all right, and that's how we can kind of tell the difference between them. So the two examples we're going to do, and we're only going to draw the condensed structural formulas for them, but methyl ethanoate, ethanoate, I don't want to spell it wrong, and then propyl ethanoate, and they have pretty crazy names because they're actually probably the most complicated ones to try to remember the naming rules for, but that's okay. Uh, meth methyl ethanoate. So I'm going to draw that like this. All right, so I'm going to have CH3, and then I have, that is an O, double bond O, single bond O, CH3, like that. All right, and so this is my ethanoate group. This is a methyl group at the end here. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with propyl ethanoate. So you can probably see what that would look like. So that's my ethanoate group. And then all I got to do is add on a propyl group. And I hope I don't run out of room. It looks like I almost did. So I just moved it down. All right, so this is my propyl group. This is my ethanoate group. Last but certainly not least, amine groups. All right, an amine, this is kind of where we get the word amino acid from and stuff. Amino acids and amines themselves. Uh, are nitrogen-containing compounds. Sometimes it's abbreviated as NH2, okay? Not all amines, though, are NH2. There's a whole different class of amines out there that we're not really going to get a chance to explore. But NH2 is probably the most common form of amine, and it is the most common nitrogen group that you'll be seeing. They all end in the word amine, so it's kind of nice. All right, so we're going to deal with two examples. Ethyl amine. Again, you can probably figure out what that would kind of be and propyl, propyl amine. All right, so what do you think that looks like? Well, for ethylamine, we've got CH3, CH2, NH2, okay? And then for propylamine, I've got CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2. So right there at the very end, I have my amine groups. And those are the seven probably most important ones that we're going to be looking at. So now let's test our skills and see if we can identify them. It says identify the functional group below and also see if you can try to name them. So the naming part, not exactly that important, but what functional group do you see? All right, this is my functional group. All right, not just the CO, the CO, and then I have this nice little H here. All right, now which one is that? That is an aldehyde. All right, how would I name that? Aldehydes all end in al, and I have one, two, three, four, five. I have one, two, three, four, five carbons, so this would be pentanal, or a form of it, a form of pentanal. All right, what about this guy? So right here in the middle, I've got an oxygen. What group is that? It is an ether group. Okay, and so how do I name ethers? They all end in ether, but I have to tell what's on both sides of the oxygen. So what are those groups called? They are ethyl groups, and I have two of them, so I have diethyl ether. All right, next up, let's try this one. So that one in the middle there, I've got a C double bond O. What do we call those? What do we call them? We call them a ketone, all right? Now, if I wanted to try to name this, uh, these ones are kind of hard. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know I have hept somewhere. And these all end in own. So I know I'm going to have heptanone. Now, how am I supposed to identify where that is? Well, if we're following sort of, you know, our naming rules and stuff, this would be three heptanone. I'd have to number my carbons and everything. But anyway, just as long as you can identify it, you're good. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask tomorrow.